Hello, I'm just going to do some live programming today and what I want to set up is a rendering loop for a 2D display and I'm going to use SDL to do that. So this is lib SDL. Um, this is the documentation of the init function. Um, <clears throat> I've used SDL before in cross-platform development to make sure exactly what I have displayed in Windows would display exactly the same in Linux and vice versa um, for a gaming system. So, uh, you know, it, it's pretty well good performance. Uh, the, the reason I'm looking back into it right now is I want to uh, have a 2D renderer that works in both Windows and Linux. Um, I want to just make some basic 2D games, but I also want to have some data display. So displays of things from the uh, 2D map state of my servers, 2D map state of some of the other games, um, sort of like a visual look into the data, if that makes sense. This is beyond GUI. This is sort of dynamically data that's you know I want to update in you know the 33 Hertz range so FPS range um, so we're going to create a new folder uh, I'm going to call it frog and I'm going to open a copy of Visual Studio I'm going to create a new one empty project uh, empty C++ project and I'm going to put it into frog and it's going to be called frog and into properties and all configurations and I'm going to go for all platforms and I'm going to make this uh, hmm, what I'm going to make that I think it should be dollar solution directory yeah uh, hmm. Not dot slash build. That's what I prefer for all of them. So I'm going to put it into, not into here, into raw frog. So the project is in there, but into one level back. Uh, all of them should be fine. And I need to add a file. So I'm going to add a source file or source folder. And into the source folder, I'm going to add main cpp thanks windows for pinging at me uh, drag that into there include io stream in main hello just to give me a a file now we know what language we can change this in all configurations to be C17, not latest, just 17 will do. Uh, I don't really care about anything else yet, um, but what we want to do is get SDL. So uh, Google SDL. Uh, we want the dev libraries. So download them. Show folder, cut to frog libraries, uh, extract here. So we've got the include directory, which um, <clears throat> I'll actually call SDL2, and we've got the lib directory. Get rid of the x86 ones, we really want those. So let me just cut this out. I just want the header files. And I just want, I actually just want the libs. You can do this however you see fit. So I now want to add to my general additional include directories back one level might need to be back two actually back to libraries uh, apply and let's see if we can now see still two still so there we go we can see it um, if def main hash on def main 
main because I want to have my own main function uh, and SDL defines its own main you have to do this you have to undefine the main so let's just see if that's okay which it is we've not made any calls to SDL so it's not actually going to uh, do anything but we'll go back into properties now we'll go to the linker additional include directories dot dot slash dot dot slash libraries libs so all the libs of any kind I'll just find in there uh, input wise stl2.lib is the only library I'm adding to the top there uh, I don't want main I don't want test and then what I want to do is go to a build event post build event x copy slash y and this would be oh, let me build it up actually because I want to use the macros this would be the solution directory, I believe. Dollar solution directory. Please. Solution directory. And then we go back one. Libraries slash libs slash start up DLL to the output directory. MNO up directory is going to be that one. Uh, I think there are other options I could add there, but that'll do for now. So let's just see if in build we now get. We didn't get it. Command X copy slash Y C frog back one libraries libs libraries libs start up dll yeah to see that should work that should work boys that's it needs to all be that way just because windows annoys me um, build again. Yeah, it's done it now. Needed to be backslashes. That's just habit for me. Um, so there's the DLL copying in. I'll put this into a blog post as well, guys. So don't worry about that. Uh, now we can go back to here and we can start to init everything. So uh, we're going to init video. Is all we're going to do. Um, it returns, I think, a non-zero, zero on success and zero on fail. So um, I'm going to define a macro check call the call it's going to be um, uh, so I want it to just be a boolean so I want to go uh, something like uh, const auto success equals check call and then it's going to be stl in it stl in it video and that's going to be success is the call equals zero uh, don't need the semicolon and if success we're going to do something else else and now I need to log something so what I'm going to add is uh, a helper function so into source, I'm going to make helpers.h and then helper.cpp. Anybody knows how to stop Windows making that noise? Comment below. Uh, we could put the header in headers. Pragma once. We only want to make that happen once. I have no format library, I have nothing else like that, so we're just going to use streams because I can. Uh, namespace Zealous. Um, and the function we're going to call is called forward log. And the parameter, initially, the parameter is going to be const. Uh, I need a stream view. Uh, STD 
string view reference message um, and then in helper CPP hash include helper space sellers paste function didn't do that uh, there we go if not p message dot um, what am I going to make it do hash include I'm just going to make it output to string stream again or set it to, to io stream to see out just for now see out p message and no flush because otherwise that interrupts everything um, you could use a logger or something that takes the messages in and outputs them yourself I, I really don't care right now uh, I just want to make sure that I can include the helper and then go zealous log log fail to initialize SDL I uh, spelled that the American way out of bad habit. Let's just see if that builds. Okay, so unable to resolve SDL in its reference main function. So uh, we've obviously got a link error. Uh, linker general dot uh, uh, libraries libs input SDL to lib. That should be fine. Let me just check. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let me go back to here. Library slash libs. Library slash libs. It's there. Oh. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Hmm. Oh. Uh, I'm on x86 up there. Let me delete x86. So don't know why it still does that. I wish it would just default to 64 bit and you had to do a different wizard to get uh, 32 bit. There we go. So it was just because I was on the wrong uh, architecture. Let's see if I get an init. So init success. Um, so once you've initialized, what do you want to do? Well, um, I want to create a window. Um, so uh, I think it's SDL create window, API name, SDL create window, uh, SDL create window. Uh, you can create window and render, but I'm not doing that. I'm going to do it as two steps. So here's the example window pointer the window equals sdl create window title will be frog position nor position nor width uh, this is a big screen so I'll just make it 7 uh, 10 24 7, 6, 8, just for now um, flags sdl window um, don't want anything so this is where I was interested in seeing Vulcan. I didn't realize Vulcan was an option there, um, but we'll make it shown. So my parameters are fairly readable. And then if the window else this log, well to create window. And you might think, well, that's ridiculous. Why have you included that? Linux. That's why. <laughs> um, because we've got a window, the last thing we want to do is destroy window. window. And then in here, we can now do some sort of task. Um, uh, here, we want to SDL quit as well. We know we've initialized SDL, so we know we need to quit SDL. We know we've created the window, so we know we need to destroy the window. These are just pairing up. So this is to get us into a loop. So, uh, bool running true while running. And I'm going to add, I'm actually not going to add it there. We go into helper. Don't need to add that 
there. So void sleep four. Uh, STD chrono milliseconds. Oops. And then in here we'll include thread. STD this thread sleep for milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, okay, but it's fine. That was a bit strange. It was unhappy a moment there. And then we can literally. So const expra const auto target sleep. So I want to run at 30 frames a second. So I'm going to take um, milliseconds. I think is going to be granular enough. I could do microseconds, but milliseconds would be fine. And I'm, so there's a thousand milliseconds in a second, and I'm going to divide it by the target frames per second. Okay. So const auto target FPS 30. So this makes it target FPS. It's a bit more obvious what I'm doing. Um, const expert auto seconds in uh, sorry ms in seconds you could do this completely differently this is just throwing it together ms in seconds so it's just to communicate what i'm doing uh, they're all const express so it will all be disappeared at the uh, compile time step anyway so there we go so this is now zealous sleep four STD chrono. Uh, in fact, I can do this as a context as well, I believe. Auto default sleep is STD chrono milliseconds target sleep. And then this is just default sleep. No? That should be fine. Sleep four milliseconds. Let me just take the reference off there. Yeah, just didn't want to be a reference. I I pass everything by const reference, so that's just me. So it's doing nothing. It renders nothing. The window opens. There's no decorations on the window. I don't really care about there uh, not being. Uh, decorations on the window so uh, what do I want to do well I now want to create a renderer um, so exactly the same procedure create renderer SDL renderer pointer the renderer equals SDL create renderer and it's going to create it in the window and its index is any available for minus one, I believe. Yeah, so just here, minus one to initialize the first one supporting requested flags. And SDL renderer accelerated. SDL renderer accelerated. Okay. If renderer. And we go into all of this, and after we come out, we do STL destroy renderer, the renderer. Otherwise, uh, zealous log fail to create renderer. Okay, we're there. So, what do we do when we? get to the end of the loop and we're going to pause before the start of the next frame um, well it's STL render present I believe uh, my notes say don't be silly it's STL render present render present renderer and at the top of the frame I want to clear it uh, SDL 
sphere render, I think. SDL. Render clear, SDL render clear. SDL render clear. Clear the renderer. So, SDL set render draw color. Uh, the renderer. I'm going to make it a shade of blue. Open MS Paint. Give me a nice shade of blue. 79 94 233. 79 94 233 255 because it's full alpha. SDL render clear. The renderer. And then we present. So this is the start of the frame. Um, so STD, what I'm going to do here um, at the top actually is uh, in here using time point equals STD chrono steady clock now. And no reference exception encounters may be caused by an extension. Didn't know, didn't know I got any extensions running. Uh, steady clock time point. So I've defined a time point and then time point now and then now return a CD steady SCD chrono steady clock now. So zealous time point, frame start, frame end. Cool. First frame, because the first frame is special. And what I want to know is how much time's elapsed. Now, it's default sleep at the moment, so I don't need to really worry about it. This is just for other purposes. Um, so the other one is last FPS update. Okay. Just thinking about this because I want to display the frames per second in the top left. Um, if first frame. This is just special stuff for later. First frame equals false. Else. Start equals zealous now. So this is the real time taken before we do the fake sleep. Frame end equals zealous now. And we could do some calculation here. Calculate real time taken and deduct from default sleep to sleep for less, even the frame time. Okay, so that's the purpose of that. What we do is we go uh, duration, um, in fact, let's do it, const auto time taken equals frame n minus frame start, const auto taken duration because this can be chrono Duration cast, this to be chrono milliseconds. Uh, you could, in fact, I'd do microseconds here, really, but we'll, we'll stick with milli. Uh, time taken. And then we know that the real time taken for this frame was uh, taken, taken duration dot count. So that's the real count of milliseconds that whatever's above it took. And what we could do is go const auto uh, real sleep equals default sleep minus taken duration okay and then we could sleep for real sleep so if we suddenly had code here that took 10 milliseconds we didn't want uh you know the real sleep to take any longer um what we do is literally sleep for only the difference 
I'm not sure why it's unhappy. No suitable definitions, but const common type t. Uh, okay. Is it because it's const? Const common type t cannot convert to std. I don't know. Millis milliseconds. go um, well, a frame count now so I want uh, just an integer will do frame count zero first frame otherwise so we always count the frame On the first frame, we don't update how long anything took. Um, but I, just, I don't even think I need that right now, but we'll see. Um, uh, on the first frame, last f best update equals uh, zealous. That's the only use for it I've got. So the first frame, we don't want to update the frames per second because a second hasn't elapsed. We'll give it a second before we start saying how many frames. Um, but when it's not the last frame, const auto since last FPS update equals zealous now minus last FPS update if const auto duration equals to the milliseconds. Let's today uh, duration cast STD chrono milliseconds since last FPS update if duration dot count greater than equal to a thousand because that's how many uh, are in a second so we can use that again then we update FPS and then we go uh, last FPS update equals less now. So we're just updating the number of frames per second. So float FPS zero. And then we go uh, FPS equals frame count divided by uh, a thousand. Or is it just the frame count? It's just the frame count, isn't it? Yeah, the frame count is just the frame count. Because uh, it's an integer. Because I'm overthinking this. FPS equals the frame count. And we'll come back to display this at some point. Otherwise, at the moment, we'll just go zealous log today to string FPS. Let's see what happens now. Uh, so I need to take a bracket off there. It's gone blue. but we're not in the frame. Hmm, it definitely drew blue, but we're not. Frame count, while running, which is true, start the frame, last FPS update, frame count, draw, present, time taken, Time taken microseconds, real sleep. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's going to sleep for 
minus seven one. Yeah, I've that, clearly got that wrong, haven't I? Uh, let's just go back to default sleep for this, and we'll come back to it in a minute because that's clearly just wrong for now. Default sleep. There we go. And we're getting 33, 61, 91, 121, or 28. So we're not zeroing it off. Frame count equals zero. I don't know why it needs to bling that many times. There we go. Frame count 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. So we're getting 30 frames a second. Let's just change this. So uh, time taken is that. Taken duration is wrong there. Milliseconds. Uh, so the taken duration. So what I want to do is say the number of target sleep take away taken duration const auto actual sleep equals target sleep which is hopefully something like 33 If, in fact, we can do it more simply, if taken duration smaller than target sleep uh, count. I want to know if the frame time is exceeding uh, the sleep more than 30 frames seconds. Is it going to stall and drop frame? Zealous log no sleep time. Just so I know that's happening. Um, take you out. Actual sleep is target sleep minus taken duration dot count, and then uh, the sleep std chrono milliseconds actual sleep. Uh, we'll just land here. See what the first one is. 32, so it's slightly, slightly slower, 30 frames a second, 30 frames a second, 30 frames a second. So that's even. Um, if you're going to do a high performance loop, you wouldn't do that. You would literally have a busy wait, uh, but I'm, I'm not bothered. So let's, let's uh, output that. Zealous log. Uh, in fact, let's. Um, I've got no format library, which is always throwing me. Stream. So, so std o string stream oss uh, sleep actual sleep zealous log ss string. Let's see what that outputs. Yeah, we're sleeping for 33 milliseconds log. So if I break, so we're sleeping for 33 and getting 30 frames a second. So that's fine. We want that in there. Take that back out. So our renderer is up. Um, what do I want to do with it? Well, I'm going to draw a cross somewhere. Um, so let me void draw cross uh, SDL point P at SDL. Uh, hmm. So from the center, is it diameter? Width? What can we call it? Radius. I don't know. Do I consider a cross from its center all the way across? Um, 
I don't know, let's just call it size, int p size. So uh, the color will be, will be whatever the renderer is. Uh, in fact, I need to pass the renderer. What I would prefer, of course, is not to pass a pointer, but once I know the, the renderer exists, once I know I'm in this stanza, um, I can assume it exists, but I'd rather pass a reference later. But for now, I'll assume it exists. Um, and what we'll do is say uh, p renderer dot Is it STL render draw line? STL render draw line, I'm sure it is. STL render draw line. Yep, there we go. So STL render draw line, the renderer, and it is. So I'm going to assume size is either way. So if I say size of two, it will draw across two pixels up that way, two pixels down that way, two pixels up that way, and two pixels down that way. So we will do p at dot x minus p size, p at dot y minus p size to p at dot x plus p size, p at dot y plus p size. STL render draw line p renderer p at dot x plus p size p at dot y minus p size p at dot x minus p size p at dot y plus p size. So that's going to draw us across somewhere. Um, STL set render draw color the renderer um, thinking what color would show up best against red uh, for against blue um, um, a neon green is a good one so naught two five five naught two five five. 255 not 255 and then draw across the renderer and um, we were 768 by sorry 124 by 768 so we'll do 124 divided by 2 768 divided by 2 4 5 size of 5 is that going to do its thing oh STL point So it's it's the renderer, the point, size of five. So I've just generated the point in there. There we go. We're rendering. We're rendering at 30 frames a second. Okay, so I want to draw the frames per second on the screen. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, I need to initialize fonts. This is the bit I can't quite remember. Uh, I'm sure it's SDL TTF. Yeah. So I'm going to get not the runtime binaries you get them by Tron. I'll get the Visual Studio libraries. Windows has got it. Cut you into frog. Into frog libraries actually. Extract here. So include is a single include. I'll just drop that in there. Lib 64. Uh, I'll assume we all know the libraries. So STL TTF free type and the lib. Just drop into my libs. Get rid of those. So at the top here now. Can include SDL, SDL2, SDL, TTF. There we go. 
now sdltf get started include ttf in it okie dokie and what I'll do is I'll assume we want the renderer up and we'll initialize ttf here and what we'll do is const auto const uh, font init success equals check call ttf init zero on success so that should be fine why is check call unhappy ttf init equals zero ttf init is undefined should be fine uh, properties linker input edit and the name of that library was str2ttf put it into the additional directories it's found it now okay so we've initialized the ttf and we need to do a ttf quit ttf undefined well it's really not you really have compiled didn't notice that, that the output directory doesn't end with a trailing slash output directory apply build again there you go it's copied all the files it's copied the other DLLs you'll see as well I have no idea why that's wiggling. It shouldn't wiggle. It should be fine. Uh, so, if font success here, or well before we close the renderer, if font success, TTF quit. Why is this like? really annoying me ttf quit is just not found either ttf quit is undefined well it's clearly not you've built and run uh, e. no close that off okie okay, dokie okay. um, so we need to now do an SDL update loop I actually need it to be able to process things um, so where we've got the while loop, SDL event, event, and at the bottom of the frame, um, the top of the frame. So, yeah, the top of the frame. So we will process uh, user input. Update for user. We'll just call it update. Uh, I don't need any of them. And I'll actually make it return uh, a bool so we can quit the loop. So bool update. And we will have up here a global event g event just to save me allocating it uh, later on um, so is it sdl sdl poll event no poll event come on so poll event gives me an event pointer so uh, if SDL poll event G event uh, 
event g event. That tells me I have an event. Just returns true. If uh, or switch g event case sdo quit event dot type needs type sdo quit return false uh, I think that's unreachable code but oh, whatever so what this now does is quits allows us to quit cleanly okay it definitely landed on TTF quit so uh, update is now able we can do things here like SDL key down SDL key up whatever we want to do um, so we'll go back now to draw the FPS so this is updating the FPS frame Up. update FPS yes so void update FPS okay now I already know what the FPS will be it will be a texture um, but before it can be a texture um, we've got to do some things um, int fps so what we do here is draw fps okay we can't draw it though because even though we've got um, the FPS we haven't yet loaded a font and I'm gonna just make it load a font um, so help us hash include file system std file system path get fonts path and this is Windows specific code at the moment okay and what I'll do is I'll have um, some sort of other function so I can get the 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 system directory or system resources uh, but it will be private so we'll go anonymous namespace and this will be std file system path get system fonts path and this will be hash if def win32 else and if for Linux so that will just be some other path in Linux uh, but in Windows uh, what we want to do is if not define win32 mean and mean define win32 mean and mean include Windows and so I'm not sure why Win32 is not defined. Let's just try debug release. So it's not defined so all configurations let's go to debug define windows in fact I'll make it windows not win32 because uh, I've removed the 32 bit thingy so we're using windows if we define windows then 
what this does is we want teacher path max path max path yep and get windows directory And then I want to make this a file system path. G file system path, the path, path. So that should be fine. I mean, that should just work. I don't care about the result. And then the path equals path append fonts or is it cap it it wasn't didn't matter for windows it's capital F so I'll make it capital F and uh, turn the path so that's the system fonts path so the fonts path for our game would be, um, in fact, it will just be font path. I just want one font at the moment. Uh, auto path equals get system fonts path, and then it's path equals path append. Um, and I'm going to guess everybody in Windows is going to have at least one of these fonts in here. Uh, Arial. Arial.ttf. Return path. It's just giving me a path. I want to load that font now. If font in it success. Uh, we use open font, so we have TTF font pointer, the font, uh, and down here, if the font TTF close font, the font just to make sure we close up after ourselves. The font equals TTF open font and it's helper oh, zealous get font path string C string size about 14. These aren't points by the way. It's not point. So it's not a 14 size point font. So we've opened a font, we've got it in memory. Um, what do I want to do with a font? I want to render, and I'm sure font render, um, it draws to a surface. there is something uh, TTF render render text solid render text solid gives you a surface pointer okay we're using a renderer so we have to use a texture but when we render the font it's going to draw it to a surface Okay, so what I want to do is uh, SDL texture pointer uh, render text texture 
Now render text const string view include string view. P message uh, TTF font point of the font or P font. Okay, so this doesn't draw it to the screen. It's going to draw it to a surface that then draws that we then convert into a texture. We can draw that texture somewhere else. Okay, so what I'm going to do is STL surface pointer surface equals TTF render text solid P font. Color as well. STL color the color do 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 font p message data is the color if the surface so this is SDL SDL Release, release surface or close surface. Uh, uh, something surface. Texture from surf free surface STL free surface the surface so it's it's utterly and totally wasteful but eh, don't care right now um, STL texture pointer result pointer to result so we can either succeed or return uh, a null. If the font is okay, and not p message empty, we don't want to draw empty strings everywhere. This is very wasteful if we do that, so we'll do nothing. Um, so uh, create texture from surface. We need the renderer. SDL renderer pointer. So we're checking the renderer, the font, everything else. So then SDL create texture from surface. Uh, result equals renderer the surface. There we go. So that's that. It's a non owning pointer. It's very bad practice to do it this way. I'd much prefer it to be. Um, you know, a unique pointer with a specified deleter, but we don't have one. So up here, we can now have SDL texture G FPS texture, which is null. And then we can go void render FPS. So update FPS, void render FPS, if G FPS texture. Uh, need to get back to the definition. SDL render a pointer P 
render it. STL render it. Pointer P render. And I'm pretty sure you just render copy. STL render copy. P render it. G FPS texture. Uh, null for the surface sort for the source rectangle because we want it to be all of it. And the desk rectangle, I want it to be in the top left. So SDL rect nor nor in fact I make it one one and then I need to get the texture size. Find texture. Texture doesn't just have a size, does it? G F S texture. G F S. Uh, but, 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 but I know what does have a size. Um, well, S D L rect. G F P S rect. F P S. Right. So that's where we'll set the FPS rect there. Um, hmm. Hmm. Hang on. I need to get properties of texture. It, the surface has the size. Um, so I tell you what, struct text rendering, still texture pointer, texture, still rect the size. This returns text rendering. leave like that so text rendering render text text rendering text rendering result little pointer still wrecked and then this is going to be Fault. Result dot uh, the texture. Result dot the size equals rect the surface. So uh, or, or the surface width, the surface height. So we're just getting the data there, just getting what we want. Uh, render copy. And uh, this is going to be. Still SDL renderer, uh, P renderer. Uh, this is no longer just a texture, that is a text rendering. Text rendering of null SDL. Right. No, 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 no. Just like that. 
So when we come to update the FPS, we will change both sides. And then this is FPS texture dot the texture dot the texture g fps texture dot the size. So we draw in just the text size that we want. Uh, uh, reference to job is a good one and what this does is then if the texture already exists then SDL free so destroy texture G FPS texture dot the texture so we just destroy it and then we render the new one so g fps texture equals render text this you need to string fps ttf font pointer p fps font pointer P font, P font, and the color. I'll make that white. Two five five two five five two five five two five five. Nothing matches. Yeah. Where? Eh? const auto value equals that value render text there are two values for render text there needs to be the renderer ah still renderer pointer p Um, signature was wrong. Update FPS now updates that texture. Render FPX now just renders it. So inside here, render FPS renderer, and here, update FPS. needs the renderer and the font so update FPS is the renderer the number of frames per second and the font uh, what's wrong with that oh. Reference to color doesn't need to be a reference to. I can just take the reference off. I can get what's that one? Narrowing. No, oh, too many vibes. There we go. We have 30 frames per second in the top left. I'm hoping that's recording that on there. So we've got a cross being drawn and 30 up there. It's flashing. I don't know why it's flashing. Shouldn't be flashing. It really shouldn't be flashing.
So we had a stall then because I have I hung unlock, you see? So we've got no sleep time stall. Why is that flashing? Rem that, rem that out. Still flashing, flashing every second. Whoops! Shouldn't flash every second. It really, really shouldn't. the sleeps out. So now it's not sleeping. So the sleep's making it flicker. Hmm. Right, that's the end of this uh, video. Um, it's been an hour and 15 minutes of me just programming. I will post exactly this code on a blog post and give you this video and I'll go see who's at the door. Bye bye.